Today is Thursday, January 3rd. We're talking about the new Congress and all the ways it's making history. And what's next after the White House meeting led nowhere. Plus, a rare announcement from Apple and a big one from Kanye West. Then hang out after the news for Thing to Know Thursday's bonus interview, what it was really like to ride in the boring company's underground tunnel. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Today is the day newly elected members of Congress are sworn in. It's the most diverse Congress ever in terms of race and gender. The Senate will still be controlled by Republicans, but the House will now have a majority of Democrats. And Democrat Nancy Pelosi will likely be Speaker of the House again. In 2007, she became the first woman to hold the gavel as Speaker. And assuming today's vote goes as expected, the New York Times says she'll be the highest ranking and most powerful elected woman in American political history. And the first lawmaker in more than 50 years to hold the office twice. But instead of celebrations on day one, this year Congress is already being put to the test. The first priority for the 116th Congress? Deal with the ongoing government shutdown. Yesterday's meeting at the White House between President Trump and congressional leaders from both parties led pretty much nowhere. No deal. And President Trump said the government will stay shut down for, quote, as long as it takes. And that could be a while. Because here's the thing. President Trump still says he needs more than $5 billion in funding for border security, essentially a border wall, before he'll sign a spending bill to stop the shutdown. And top Democrats still say no money for a wall, period. So talks continue. The Hill reports President Trump invited congressional leaders back for a second meeting tomorrow. Well, one of the incoming senators starting work today is Republican and former presidential candidate Mitt Romney. And Romney is making headlines this week for writing an opinion article saying Trump has, quote, caused dismay around the world. Reuters reports that other top Republican leaders say they wish he wasn't writing that. And now the president is hitting back. Trump tweeted that Romney should focus on border security and be a team player, adding, quote, I won big and he didn't. A rare warning from Apple that did not go over well in the business and investing world. The company warned its revenue is lower than expected. Its stock dropped about 7 percent on the news. CNBC says Apple is blaming a few things for this drop. One, the trade war still happening between the U.S. and China, which equals a weakening economy in China and lower iPhone sales in that market. And two, Apple says not as many people in other countries are upgrading to new iPhones. Business Insider says the bad news from Apple seems to be taking a toll on other tech stocks as well, like Amazon and Intel. Netflix got some threats and some backlash. First, it took down an episode of one of its shows after threats from the government in Saudi Arabia. In an episode of Patriot Act with Hassan Minhaj, the comedian ridicules Saudi Arabia for trying to explain away the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and criticizes the U.S. and American companies for their ties to the country and its money. And apparently, in Saudi Arabia, that's considered a cyber crime. Well, Variety reports after Netflix pulled the episode, critics are now saying the company should not have caved, that it's all about freedom of speech. So Netflix put out a statement saying it got a valid legal request and is complying with local laws there. By the way, most of the episode we're talking about here is actually still up on Netflix's YouTube channel in Saudi Arabia. So in the end, this may have actually brought more attention to the episode. Let's take a quick break to thank this week's sponsor, Babbel. It's a language learning app that helps you learn and speak a new language with confidence. So if you're looking for a new and worthwhile challenge in 2019, this just might be it. Learn one of 14 different languages available on Babbel, including Spanish, French, even Polish. Babbel is designed to quickly get you speaking your new language within weeks. I think sometimes the hardest part is, one, just getting started, and two, actually using the language in the real world. And that's what I love about Babbel. The lessons are just 10 to 15 minutes each, so it's easy to get going and fit this into your life. And Babbel focuses on the most commonly used words and phrases, so you can actually go out and have conversations with the language. It's a teaching method proven effective across multiple studies. Plus, right now, you can try it for free. Just go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com or download the app to try it free. Babbel is the number one selling language learning app in the world, helping people just like you speak a new language with confidence. 
A new show on Netflix stems from a book you've probably heard of before, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. It came out in 2014, and she kind of became the first celebrity sorter. Well, now she has her own reality show on Netflix. It came out on New Year's Day, so you can watch all eight episodes. In each one, Kondo helps a different family clear the clutter, only to keep the things that, quote, spark joy. But another Netflix original just might send some people to the hospital. In fact, Netflix is telling viewers, do not try this at home. The so-called Bird Box Challenge is going around on social media. Videos and memes of people walking around blindfolded. And for some people, it means things like walking into walls. Bird Box is the Netflix horror movie where the characters have to navigate the world blindfolded to protect themselves. Well, Netflix says, thanks for the love, but please don't hurt yourself. The lineup for Coachella 2019 is here. The big concert in the California desert is in April 2019, and now we know the three big headliners. Childish Gambino on day one, Tame Impala on day two, and Ariana Grande closing out Coachella on the third day. Originally, Page Six says Kanye West was rumored to be headlining, but that's apparently not happening anymore. But Kanye does have some other news this week. Us Weekly reports he and Kim Kardashian are expecting their fourth child, a baby boy, through a surrogate. Well, that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Thing to Know Thursday, where a different expert explains a different thing to know every Thursday after the news. This week, you'll hear from one of the few people invited to ride in the Boring Company's underground tunnel in Los Angeles last month. You might remember, Elon Musk held the first public viewing of what he calls The Loop. It's a test tunnel, less than two miles long, that is getting national attention. His vision is to essentially eliminate traffic with a new transportation option underground. But will it work in L.A. or anywhere else? Kirsten Korosek is here to share her insights. She's a senior reporter and editor at TechCrunch who specializes in transportation and technology. She's also the co-host of the twice-weekly show The Otana Cast. And she got a first-hand look at the so-called loop. Here's my conversation with Kirsten Korosek. Hi, Kirsten. Thank you so much for coming on The Newsworthy. Thanks for having me. So I first want to kick things off with just your big picture of what it was like to be the first, one of the first people to ride in the Boring Company's tunnel, or as they're calling it, loop. I think the the most important thing here that might be missed is that this is a demonstration project. Uh, It's not really meant to be this polished, finished thing. And that was very indicative of the experience. It's a pretty bumpy experience, a pretty dusty experience. So I'll walk you through a little bit of, of what it was like When we arrived across the street from where SpaceX headquarters are in the city of Hawthorne, there is a ramp that goes down and there is the tunnel. A little over a mile away, there is an elevator. In my ride, I jumped into a a Tesla Model X. There is a, a test driver. We drove over there. We descended down this elevator to a tunnel. Very uh, tight feeling. Anyone who has problems with claustrophobia might feel uncomfortable Uh, lit with sort of a neon-like LED lighting that was either green or red, essentially telling you whether to go or stop. And the driver proceeded. Now, in the the futuristic concept, you would be able to go 150 miles an hour. We went about 44 miles an hour. The driver engaged Navigate on autopilot at one point, but essentially was driving the vehicle. And it was a pretty bumpy ride. It felt a little unfinished. And it kind of reminded me of those wooden roller coaster rides that aren't quite smooth. (laughs) And um, I probably the only other thing to note is the vehicle was not on a skate. This was something that Elon Musk had talked about. He has ditched that idea. Instead, it's a deployable, retractable sort of tracking device. Think of it a little bit like when you go into a car wash and it grips the tire, but a little different, but similar in that it is keeping the car in a track. This deploys from underneath the carriage of the vehicle and fits into this groove on either side of the tunnel and is meant to keep you moving forward. Can you talk about how Elon Musk envisions this and who it would be for? Good idea or not, there are a number of caveats to this as well. So Elon Musk's vision is that this tunnel, these would be stackable tunnels. So they wouldn't be two-way traffic, right? So you'd have one tunnel going one way and another going the other way. Imagine it like a giant underground highway where the main artery 
you're going very fast. And then there would be ingress, egress points throughout where the traffic would slow, presumably be able to pop out from this ramp onto a city street or through an elevator um, without any congestion. And that's caveat number one, how he envisions that happening in, let's say, L.A., could be problematic um, at the very least. Secondly, it'd have to be an electric and autonomous vehicle. He said very clearly that this isn't meant to be a walled garden or just for Teslas. But right now, there aren't a lot of electric vehicles. And technically, Teslas are not autonomous. They are semi-autonomous. They're a level two system. A human driver is still required. So again, what car would this be? The other thing that we that they would have to do is they would reserve some vehicles for public transport as well. So they would have presumably these electric autonomous vehicles that a pedestrian or bicyclist could come down, jump in, and it would be a shared ride. Again, he threw out a number. He said maybe it would be about a dollar a ride, but we really don't know. I mean, and really, this is years away, and that's a detail that will follow many, many, many other details that will have to be solved prior to that. Exactly. I mean, uh, talking with some L.A. Metro officials, they're saying we won't allow something that is only for rich people, essentially. And so they have to figure out how to make it transportation for everybody on top of all the other details of digging and all that. If this did work out, first of all, do you think it's possible? And second of all, what do you think that timeline could look like? Timelines are tricky when Elon Musk is involved, and he would be the first to admit that. So I'm not going to even go with timelines. He was asked during a press briefing if something like this might be ready for the Olympics in 2028 in Los Angeles, and he sort of off the top of his head said, sure. But that's the type of answers you kind of get. I'm not going to put it past the man to be able to pull off something I will say that, that there are so many moving parts here and so many regulations that they would have to go through. And um, also he's running two other companies, not to mention another side project, which is Neuralink, that we'll see what the timeline is. Could it be a decade, two decades? Who knows? The Boring Company did achieve something really interesting with their modification to their boring machines. The first generation is the one that did this section. The next second generation is going to have the capability to simultaneously mine or bore and put the cement segments up that you would picture in a tunnel. That's going to reduce costs and save time. And he very clearly said that this could be used also for tunnels for utilities and water and transportation. And I kind of think that the water and utility has a really good possible market there with cities instead of digging up a road, potentially depending on the cost of renting one of these boring machines, that might be something that could be really useful and usable. So that piece is really interesting to me. And it seems a little bit more plausible that it would have life. Any final thoughts that listeners should really walk away with? You don't want to necessarily root against Elon Musk. Then again, there are so many other things he's doing right now. Tesla, SpaceX are the two big ones. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of years. I think an important project to watch will be the Chicago one. Uh, this is something where the mayor is, Rahm Emanuel, is, is very interested in, which is providing this tunnel from Chicago O'Hare Airport. I will note that the L, public transit, already does this. Uh, so it's unclear what this tunnel would solve. I think that 2019, 2020 will be telling in terms of really where does this company go. And you can catch more of her reporting on this topic and others at TechCrunch.com or check out our podcast, The Otanocast, where they talk all things transportation technology. As always, I've linked to all of that in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com, along with all the other stories we talked about in this episode. Go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. Thank you so much for listening today. The Newsworthy is ready for you by four in the morning every weekday. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day.